This is it. You're listening to Jacob Dean. Most of our leaders have either sold out, caved in, gave up. They don't want to tell people the truth. If you're looking for filters, you came to the wrong place. They're too concerned about their careers. They're too concerned about success. They're too concerned about just winning the next election for their status. We bring you the real stuff. This is Filter Free Radio with Jacob Dean. But who wants to tell the truth? The condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. If you don't talk about poverty, you're not telling the truth. You're not talking about working people being pushed against the wall with corporate profits high. You're not telling the truth. You're listening to Jacob. If you're not talking about the criminal activity on Wall Street and not one person going to jail yet, you're not telling the truth. Filter Free Radio with Jacob Dean on the Ustream home of Nicole Sandler, Radio or Not, and FilterFreeRadio.com. And we live now in revolutionary times, but the counter-revolution is winning. Live every Monday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have a new wave of truth-telling. We're going to have a new wave of witness-bearing. And we're going to teach the younger generation that these brothers didn't struggle in vain, just like John Brown and Nat Turner and Marcus Garvey and Martin King and Miles Horton and the others did. And we shall see what happens. We might get crushed, too. But you know what? Then you just go down swinging like Ella Fitzgerald Muhammad Ali. Welcome to Occupy the Airwaves. <laughs> it's Filter Free Radio. My name is Jacob Dean. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C., the nation's capital here where all the magic happens. And we're going to be getting into a lot of the magic that has been happening over the weekend Occupy protests being shut down forcefully all over the country. We're going to be getting into that in quite some detail. Uh, Occupy Portland. Actually, we're going to get uh, J.D. Fishing on from the chat room. I uh, was going to come on in a, a little bit later in the program, talk about Occupy Portland, what's been happening there. We're going to get uh, Jeff, um, Jeff Roundball Hauser from Occupy Denver. He's going to be joining us live from Denver a little bit later in the program, talking about the violent crackdown that happened there at that camp. Also, if you go to FilterFreeRadio.com, I want you to see the three videos that are on our front page right now, FilterFreeRadio.com, about my latest uh, Occupy hero, uh, Hawaiian guitarist musician Makana. And this is our, uh, we're going to open the show with this. This is our top story. Also, I want to get into a little bit of uh, news that you need to know. But before I get any further, allow me to welcome our fantastic and fine, super duper awesome co host uh, who's um, always with us at this time, Skeptical Scott. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. And joining us all show long um, and mad producer props, um, uh, Kenny Pick, turn up the night here on uh, RadioOrNot.com, Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, Kenny gets mad produ uh, producer props for some fine work, some fine research and uh, clips this evening. And Kenny's with us. Hey, Ken, you there, bud? I sure am. <laughs> Rock and roll, buddy. Thanks for joining us. That's all right. I didn't do anything that special either. Don't don't let Jacob uh, <laughs> pump me up that much. It's cool. I'm not even wearing a tie. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I felt that uh, today is a very important day for us, and I wanted to, um, uh, you know, get uh, get in the zone here as as it, as it as it is. Um, let's see. Well, first of all, let's start off with the need to know news. And right now, what you need to know is there have been uh, arrests and police crackdowns against the ninety nine percent movement over the weekend. Um, I'm going to be focusing on Occupy Portland for um, specifically for the show today, only because I'm from Portland. It is near and dear to my heart. I take uh, Portland very specifically personally. Um, and also, um, you know, kind of what happened there uh, Sunday, um, thousands of protesters uh, showed up at the deadline that was given by Mayor Sam Adams uh, midnight on, on uh, Saturday night. Uh, eventually, police moved in. Fifty people were arrested. They shut down the occupations. They have the uh, camps fenced off and blocked off so no one can get in. Also, um, different places across the country. Salt Lake City, 19 people were arrested. Uh, they shut down that occupation. In Albany, New York, 24 people were arrested. And as I mentioned, again, in Denver... Uh, I would I would say I would vote Denver was probably the most violent of all of the uh, crackdowns, police crackdown. And we're going to get Jeff on a little bit later in the program to talk about that. Jeff is live in Denver. Um, 
And and I want to get into uh, what happened with Portland here in a little bit, but um, and I also want to thank I thank uh, my uh, sweetheart Carmen for actually sending me the breaking news update last week on Thursday when Mayor Sam Adams announced a deadline to shut down Occupy Portland. We're going to get into that a little bit. I've got some news on that. Um, I also asked, I did uh, put in a media request to the mayor's office, Mayor Sam Adams of Portland. Haven't heard back from him. Um, I actually agree with Mayor Sam Adams, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, but I think right now, the, the story of the day, if you go to filterfreeradio.com, I've got three videos up that you need to see um, that you need to see, and, and the story outlining it from uh, Zed Jelani, Think Progress thinkprogress.org, uh, APAC, the uh, Asian Pacific Economic uh, Cooperation, um, they had a forum. It's being currently held right now in Honolulu, Hawaii, bringing together uh, many of the world's leaders in both public and private sectors, including President Barack Obama and his wife Michelle um, Obama. Last night, APAC held a dinner uh, event uh, which uh, President Obama was at, and my New hero. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm labeling this man a hero, um, and I, I would you know, say that to be the least. Um, I, I think it goes much beyond heroic, but um, Hawaiian guitarist Makana. Uh, Makana is his name, um, or, is, or uh, the, the name that he uses to record as. Uh, he has previously played for uh, President Barack Obama. He plays the guitar. He's a Hawaiian guitarist. He, he was invited to the White House. Yes, back in 2009, he played um, for Obama, and he was scheduled to play last night at the APAC conference, but rather than do his normal routine, he decided to make a statement, and he actually uh, opened his jacket uh, while he was performing and revealed his shirt that read, Occupy with Aloha, uh, and then he proceeded to play a protest ballad. Uh, which he wrote, titled We Are the Many. And if you tuned in just a minute before we started the program, I actually did a couple of minutes of pre-show for you, and I played that song, and we're going to be playing the entire song again on the break here in about 20 minutes from now. Um, and and, and McConaughey made this statement, made this stand in front of Barack Obama, which I think is so brilliant, and I want to applaud him and a tip of the hat and a thank you for, for being the voice for all of us, um, actually being able to reach those significant figures. Um, and if you listen to the lyrics, again, the video is posted at filterfreeradio.com. You can listen to the lyrics. He blasts corporate lobbyists, calls on Americans to occupy the streets. Um, and then he actually played the song. He, he tells the story. He played the song for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. Stunning. He created new versions of it, he said. Yeah, it, this is brilliant. And so um, without, without further speaking for him, I'd like him to, uh, to speak for himself here. This is a little clip from uh, one of the videos. Uh, he's, uh, this is McConaughey telling his story about um, playing at the APEC conference. And again, you can watch the whole video at filterfreeradio.com. So I just came from playing the World Leaders Dinner at APEC here in Honolulu for the Obamas and 19 or 20 other world leaders. I showed up and did my gig and I started to look around and I thought about this song I just wrote called We Are The Many. And it was an incredible experience to sing the words, those words, to that room of people. And I didn't belt it out, I started out very subtly and subliminally and I was like, Ye come here, gather round the stage, time has come for us to voice our rage. Did he just say what I think he said? And then I realized that, wow, I didn't get in trouble. So I played it again, and I made like a different version of it. I ended up playing it for about 45 minutes. To be able to sing that there was an epic feeling. It felt right. My uncle always told me, play what's in your heart and play to the audience, you know? Play what you feel is right for them. That's what I did. And I found it odd that I was afraid to do it at first. I found that disturbing. That's kind of why I did it. I didn't like the idea of being afraid to sing a song that I created. I've never in my life been afraid to sing anything. If that's what we've come to in the world where we're afraid to say certain things in the company of certain people, 
I think that's a dangerous place to be. And so for me to move out of that space, I had to sing the song. And that's what I did. Bless you, sir. Again, uh, Makana, wow. you can watch all the videos over at FilterFreeRadio.com. Um, I want to get uh, Kenny and, and Scott your thoughts on that and just how important it is for us to kind of step outside of our uh, comfort, um, you know, our, our comfort zones and and you know take a stand and do what's right and and you know and he's leading by example. I think it's brilliant. Um, Kenny, your thoughts? I know I play guitar. You play guitar. You know, having an opportunity yeah. to play your protest song in front of President Obama and the world like that. I mean, that's got to be surreal, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that takes some gusto. To, you know, I'm a, I am play guitar and sing, and I have no problem singing in front of an audience. But to be unaccompanied for 45 minutes in front of the president and first lady, uh, that's got to be pretty daunting. And I'll tell you what, that's... Uh, uh, I, I say amen to him for that. That's a, again, it takes a lot of gusto. That is an amen moment. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have an amen. Well, throw it <laughs> there you go. Where's, where's the boogity boogity amen? Boogity boogity. <laughs> yeah. um, um, but it's it, phenomenal. I, you know, I, I really don't have much more to say than that. And yeah, I, if I it could have the opportunity to do something like that, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. I don't know how to have the balls. A uh, grande huevos. That's what. Well, that's what I'm saying. Um, muy grande huevos. Grande. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that guy deserves a round of applause. Um, and uh, and and so yeah, you know, just leading by example. And I, l- I love his story. He, he goes into it a little bit more in detail a little bit later on. I'm gonna play um, a clip right now. It's game over, man. Man. Game game over. Over. Using the horn. Oh. I am sorry. No, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Scott. Uh, <laughs> so, no, what no. it was, I was trying to type in the chat, and I started hitting all the hotkeys on my oh. box. <laughs> oh, yeah, hockey is cool. Yeah. No, Minim- it's. That. <laughs> it's, it's it is absolutely all right all as well and um if you if you go into more into the story actually um or actually more into the video uh and listen to him telling his story he 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 kind of lays out the fact that he, it was not his intent to you know disrupt the dinner it was not his intent to you know be a be a menace or cause a scene or anything and he really subtly you know he was just supposed to be playing background music guitar music um in the background while the folks ate and he, you know, he says he he says in this interview on CNN this morning, uh, he goes into a little bit more about uh, his tactics and how he was able to pull this off without uh, without a hitch. And well done. But tell me first of all, what were you thinking? I mean, why did you do it? Um, I think the real question is why wouldn't I have done it? It felt like the right song to sing. I wrote it with the intention of people in power hearing it. So you're playing this song, what, once, twice? Did anyone notice, or are the most powerful people in the world just sitting around working on their entrees? Uh, My intention wasn't to disrupt their dinner. My intention was to subliminally convey a message that I felt was paramount to the negotiations. And then when I felt like it was safe, I'd start again, and eventually I got enough courage to go into it for an extended period of time, and I ended my show with the line, the bidding of the many, not the few. I sang it about 50 times in different ways for them to hear. Oh, man. Uh, you're with us today. Are you in any kind of trouble at all? I hope not. Why? I was just singing. If, if I'm in trouble for singing, we have major problems. Fair enough. Makana, live from Honolulu. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, quite a performance. And if you if you want to see that whole CNN interview that he did, um, filterfreeradio.com, also the whole interview. Um, yes, if you hear police sirens in the background, we are broadcasting live. It is Washington D.C. These things happen. You can you can leave the window open, Scott. I promise I won't throw my phone out the window yeah, this right. time. It's, uh, you might get some wicked ass thunder from Cleveland, Ohio here too, because I swear to God, I don't know what's going on. They're gone. <laughs> Angry, the 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 planet Mother Earth is revolting against uh, carbon (laughs) carbon dioxide pollution. (laughs) No, I am. Uh, maybe a bit extreme. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome filterfreeradio.com. Jacob Dean, Skeptical Scott, and Kenny Pick is here with you. And coming up in just a couple of minutes, we're going to get Ray Maderos on from the Ray Maderos show. Uh, we're going to talk with Ray for a little bit, get an update from him on some of his latest writings and and the happenings. And he's got a uh, putting together a brand new website and a brand new show, USA Progressive with Ray Maderos. So. Stay tuned for that. And a little bit later, following Ray in the program, 
We're actually going to get an update live from Portland, Oregon. Uh, my father is is going to call into the show. J.D. Fishin from the chat room is going to give us an update on Occupy Portland. And also Jeff Roundball Hauser, our, our friend from Denver, is going to be calling in about Occupy Denver and what happened there. Um, but I want to I want to kind of focus on um, Occupy Portland for the moment. My uh, my my sweetie Carmen, thank you, hon, emailed me uh, about twelve thirty on Thursday, breaking news that Portland Mayor Sam Adams was giving the Occupy Portland encampment an eviction notice, um, and they were going to clear out the parks by uh, midnight on Saturday, and. This breaking news came out on Thursday last week. Uh, Mayor Adams cited the rise in crime around the encampments um, in ordering you know, the demonstrators out of the several occupations in different squares. Uh, also, uh, Terry Shrunk Plaza, um, a federal park. Uh, he said, quote, crime especially reported assaults has increased in the area. Occupy has had a considerable time to share its movement's message with the public, but has lost control of the camps it has created, end quote. Um, and that's pretty much exactly what happened. I want to play these clips that Kenny got for us. Kenny, thank you, my man. Producer, um, uh, uh, Kenny Pick Super Duper Mass Producer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, I'll take that. Uh, Ken grabbed a couple of clips from uh, from the Oregonian. Um, a uh, used to be a um, a pretty decent newspaper. It was recently bought out by, I believe, the New York Times or one of the one of the Rupert, cons- Rupert Murdoch, right? Right, one of the conservative. Um, and this was a few years ago, but um, you know the Oregonian is still kind of the staple hold newspaper uh, source for um, folks in Oregon. I mean, I used to read it daily. And um, here's a clip real quick of two occupiers from Portland, Maggie and Elijah, talking about how even though Mayor Sam Adams is closing down the, um, the parks, and I'm going to tell you why I agree with Mayor Adams on this in just a second after this clip. But um, even though they're going to shut down the parks, the movement is far from over. This movement isn't over just because they've taken this park from us. It's happening all over the world. We are in solidarity with every other place in America and around the entire world that is occupying. We're not alone here. This is the biggest social and political movement of of human history. This is by no means the end of our movement. By no means the end of our movement. Amen, you know. Amen, brother. And, And She's right, too. It's global. Right, it is global. It's it's growing. It's it's only in the beginning stages. And I want I want to specify why I agree with Mayor Sam Adams and actually agree with him in his decision to um, put a stop to the parks. When I first heard this, I flipped a bitch. I freaked out. I was pulling my hair out. I was screaming. I was cursing. I posted a Facebook. Oh my God! WTF, Mayor Sam Adams? WTF? WTF? Um, of course, without. Uh, reading into why or really fully understanding what was going on. I pulled an Ashton Kutcher. Um, and if you, if you don't know what I'm referencing, Ashton Kutcher uh, did the same exact thing about the Joe Pa, the Penn State, um, on his Twitter and freaked out and then had to recall a whole bunch of statements. But I, I deleted the Facebook p- uh, post after I read further into the article that uh, Carmen had sent me and had a couple of conversations with a couple of friends of mine on Facebook from Portland. Now, I'm in Washington, D.C. I'm from Portland. I've, I've been in, lived in Portland my entire life, but I'm not there um, as of last year. And so I haven't been down to Occupy Portland. Um, I am going to be going down uh, back to Portland in a couple of weeks, and so I will go down and give you a live report and do a a broadcast or recording from there. But um, as of right now, I I didn't fully understand what what was happening at Occupy Portland. And from what I've collected and gathered from all of my sources, um, it, it got way out of control. It got ridiculously out of control. It, it turned violent in some cases, riots in some cases. Um, there are, I believe, four reported drug overdose deaths, uh, three confirmed. I'm not sure about the fourth. Um, if anyone in chat or, or um, can... Yeah, but you know why that were, what that is about, right? Right. Well, now... Uh, it's yeah. not to say that the protesters are dead. It's to say that homeless people congregate in this community and, and you know, drug addicts as well. 
Yes, absolutely. No, I agree with you, Scott. Thanks for adding that. Um, you're absolutely right. And it's not necessarily, uh, I wouldn't say that it's the responsibility of Occupy uh, protest or, or Occupy Portland to, you know, uh, take on those responsibilities. It's just, you know, it kind of comes with the full package. Well, yeah, when you have, when you start an open community, you have to welcome everybody. And of course, the least among us are the homeless. And so they're going to congregate there because you have food and you're willing to feed them and clothe them and shelter them. I mean, it really it becomes almost a homeless shelter with, along with the protest movements. Right, right, and and um, you know, I talked to I talked to a couple of my friends, and one of them actually walked down uh, walked down through Occupy Portland and couldn't believe how how bad it was. And actually, after I found that out um, and looked into it and read up and researched everything that was going on, I actually agree with Sam Adams in in some of the tweets that he he wrote. Um, and if if you want more. Um, on that, you can find uh, Mayor Sam Adams on Twitter. Actually, he uses Twitter uh, quite a bit for communications. Um, I'll read you real quick. This is from OregonLive.com, the uh, kind of official Oregonian website, OregonLive.com. Uh, this morning, this is Kimberly Wilson re uh, reporting, a day after Portland uh, police cleared Occupy Portland protests from three downtown uh, parks, Mayor Sam Adams says the overall Occupy Wall Street movement needs to refocus. Uh, about 9.30 this morning, Adams, Mayor Adams used Twitter to issue a statement that the movement is, quote, bigger than camps. Um, continuing, he says, it was a fantastic way to start a global movement, but it's not working anymore. It needs to evolve fast. And then he continued on, quote, for crying out loud, focus. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, I can't agree more. Um, when, when these movements, when things like that happen and it gets out of hand, it becomes destructive and no longer constructive for the movement itself, um, you know, shooting itself in the foot. Um, yeah, and yeah that, the they'll last, do that. Yeah, <laughs> that last clip I sent you from the Oregonian actually had one of the protesters out there in the street uh, saying, yeah, let's, you know, just stop screaming the same thing over and over again. Let's focus. Let's go have you know a new uh, 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 GA and actually focus and uh, see what we can get done. And here is the clip that Kenny is speaking of again. Thank you, Kenny. Super oh, mass, <laughs> uh, super duper mass producer Kenny Pick uh, got us these clips from the Oregonian and uh, listen to this protest, uh, this Occupy Portland protester. And if we really want to make a change, standing here yelling the same thing over and over again is not going to do anything. But going to Pioneer Square and having a GA that is constructive. Right. They, um, and, of course, if you don't know, uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square is kind of the central um, living room, if you will, of downtown Portland. Um, and I, we've got about five minutes for the break. I want to read this quote really quick uh, from Martin Luther King on nonviolence. I think this is really important. It's a, it's a little bit long. It's a little long quote, but um, I think it's very important to share this whole thing with you. He says, quote, I believe more than ever in the power of nonviolent resistance. It makes it possible to secure moral end through moral means. People have felt that it is impossible to achieve moral ends through moral means means. Even communism could come into being and say that anything justifies the end of a classless society, lying, deceit, hate, violence, anything. And that is where nonviolent resistance breaks with communism and with all of those systems that argue that the end justifies the means, because we realize that the end is preexistent in the means. What's the point? He continues, and this is the last line of the quote, in the long run of history, destructive means cannot bring about constructive ends. I can't no, say violence begets more violence. I, I can't say it any better than that, um, and that's why I use Martin Luther King to quote that. So thank you, uh, Dr. King. Um, yeah, so I just want to, again, highlight, and we spent the whole show last week on Filter Free Radio talking about the importance of nonviolence. Nonviolence is the only way. Um, I don't know if you actually caught the uh, the Tom Hartman program this uh, this afternoon or this morning, wherever you're listening. Uh, today's program, we had a half an hour long conversation to open the show 
with um where is his name at it's somewhere here give me just a second it's a great show by the way i oh. did two things. It was fantastic <laughs> thank you buddy i uh let's go while we're young yeah rodney <laughs> well um unfortunately i've misplaced those notes um um uh, what was his name cruz donald cruz i i can't recall anyways um he was a, he was a member he was an attorney and um uh uh, by any means necessary is his website. Uh, B A M N dot com. <laughs> I had wow. I, I'm sorry. I'm doing this all from memory. Okay. Uh, by any means necessary dot com, or the the acronym of that is his website. <laughs> and he came on, and he's also a he's an attorney, and he's a he's a um, Occupy Cal participant in Occupy Cal. Oh uh, yeah, we should talk about that too. And he came on, and he basically said, and Tom pushed back on him a lot, saying, you know, he, he was saying, you know, any, by any means necessary, we need to strengthen the movement. By any means necessary, we need to grow the movement. By any means necessary. And Tom said, you know, basically words to the effect of, and you're including violence in that, you're including destruction, you're including chaos, you're including rioting, you're including violence. And the guy said, yeah. And I, uh, words to the effect of yes, he wasn't advocating violence, but he, yeah, was, he, he was, he was skirting around it, but he was saying yes. And I, I mean, that scared me like the whole time I'm sitting back here in the producer's seat, looking at Tom going, whoa, this is nowhere near where we thought this conversation was going. And, you know, Tom being the brilliant, um, Zen radio master that he is, was able to, to hone it back in and, you know, and really get the message uh, that nonviolence is the only way out. But it was a really bizarre conversation. I hope he was only talking about uh, against like infrastructure and not against people. Well, go back. You can go to um, uh, you know, TomHartman.com for audio and, and video archives of the program. Also, they're on Facebook and Twitter and jazz. Because yeah, um, there's an anarchical streak. And, I mean, when we talk about an all-encompassing movement, and it is a left, if you will, all-encompassing movement. So you have anarchists and things of that nature. But, yeah. uh, but to just uh, real quick put a final note on that, B-A-M-N is actually kind of a uh, fringe, very extremist group. And... Um, usually we're, we're really good about, um, about that stuff, but... Did you see the Occupy and uh, what happened in Chapel Hill? There was, there was some anarchists in Chapel Hill that uh, had taken over, uh, occupied a building that was foreclosed on, and the SWAT team moved in. <laughs> right, right. Wow. And, and, you know, more examples of things actually getting out of hand. And um, this, is, this is no bueno, ladies and gentlemen, no bueno. Um, so we're going to take a we're going to take a quick break here and come back with Ray Maderos of Ray Maderos show but i just i wanted to uh i wanted to share that message again with you and kind of you know solidify my position on that and actually i am agreeing with mayor adams in shutting down occupy portland which has gotten out of hand they need to refocus they need to you know reconvene refigure out you know how they're going to go about a peaceful nonviolent passive resistance protest um, and, and again, we're going to get into this a little bit later in the program, get your thoughts on it. And, um, and let's see what Ray has to say about this as well. We'll ask him, we'll, we'll ask Ray on his thoughts on that. So don't go anywhere. Filter Free Radio will be right back. I'm Jacob Dean, joined by Skeptical Scott and Kenny Pick of Turn Up the Night right here on RadioOrNot.com. And, um, yeah, l more news you need to know. So don't go anywhere. I've got a couple of, couple of tricks up my sleeve for the rest of the program, too. <laughs> My gut says maybe. Welcome to Filter Free Radio. Come into the light. It's bright because it's unfiltered. Mondays, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. FilterFreeRadio.com Be quiet. <laughs> this is We Are The Many by Makana. Go to FilterFreeRadio.com to see the full video. Hey, come here and gather around the stage. The time has come for us to voice our rage Against the ones who've trapped us in a cage 
to steal from us the value of our wage from underneath the vestiture of law the lobbyists at Washington do not at liberty the bureaucrats guffaw and until they are purged we won't withdraw we'll occupy the streets We'll occupy the courts We'll occupy the offices of you Till you do The bidding of the many, not the few Our nation was built upon the right of every person to improve their plight The laws of this republic they rewrite And now a few own everything in sight They own it free of liability They own that they are not like you and me their influence dictates legality And until they are stopped, we are not free We'll occupy the streets We'll occupy the courts We'll occupy the offices of you Till you do The bidding of the many, not the few Force your monopolies with guns While sacrificing our daughters and sons But certain things belong to everyone Your thievery has left the people none So take heed of our notice to redress we had little to lose, we must confess Your empty words do leave us unimpressed A growing number join us in protest We occupy the streets, we occupy the courts We occupy the offices of you till you do Bidding of the many, not the few You can't divide us into sides And from our gaze you cannot hide Denial serves to amplify and our allegiance you can't buy Our government is not for sale The banks do not deserve a bail We will not reward those who fail We will not move till we prevail We'll occupy the streets We'll occupy the courts We'll occupy the offices of you Till you do The bidding of the many, not the few We'll occupy the streets We'll occupy the courts We'll occupy the offices of you Till you do the bidding of the many, not the few We are the many You are the few
This is Kenny Pick from Turn Up the Night. More quality from Radio or Not. Filter Free Radio with Jacob Dean. Welcome back to Filter Free Radio. My name is Jacob Dean. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. The show that's not telling you what to think, but simply what to think about. Um, <laughs> that uh, last song that you just heard is from my new hero, the brilliant, fantastic Makana, the Hawaiian guitarist, um, the, the hero, I'm labeling him a hero, who got up in front of President Barack Obama and played that song that you just heard as well, uh, for uh, President Barack Obama as well as 20 other world leaders. He played that song for 45 minutes. Uh, if you want more information on Makana, go check out FilterFreeRadio.com, the front page. I've got three videos and all the news that you need to know about that up there. I want to thank Scott, uh, as always, for, for being here with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, our super, mass, uh, super duper mass producer, Kenny Pick, of uh, Turn Up the Night. Um, Ken, always a pleasure to have you on, buddy. Anytime. And, you know, earlier when you said you pulled an Ashton Kutcher, I thought you meant you cheated on your mom. <laughs> Waka waka. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, your box. Right. There you go. There you go. Sorry, you. Scott. Um, and uh, without further ado, let me get right to him. Uh, I don't want to keep him waiting on, on the phone any longer. I want to welcome to the uh, for the very first time to Filter Free Radio. He is the host of the Ray Madero Show uh, and also, well, the brand new show, USA Progressive with Ray Madero's. The website is usa-progressive.blogspot.com. You can catch him live uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, five days a week uh, on Twitter. Twitter at Ray Madero's show, also on Facebook, and he also writes for PoliticusUSA.com. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Filter Free Radio, Mr. Ray Madero's. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy, for coming on the program with us. Uh, I was cracking up, Kenny. That, that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, I got it. You, no matter what, I... if anybody else didn't get it, I understood exactly what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> That was absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> Boy, was Papa Bruce mad about that. <laughs> Papa Bruce. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> you guys are too funny. Um, we, could, we, could, we could chat this up all day. That, that's excellent. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to get Ray on, first of all, because, um, Ray, you actually, uh, we've communicated via Twitter, and we've talked, and, and Ray, you've actually sent us um, uh, Tom Hartman. Uh, you call into the Tom Hartman program. Your, your contributions to the show are always fantastic, the, the info that you give, and you send me links to breaking news all the time, um, and, and the articles that you've written, uh, I've actually got a printout of, of a couple of the most recent ones over at Politicus USA. Um, go check it out, politicususa.com. Most recently, uh, article titled, Almost Every GOP Presidential Candidate Will Add to the Debt with More War. It's definitely worth reading. Go check it out. Um, but, Ray, you've got some info. Actually, I think is is really phenomenal and brilliant info on um, actually breaking down the demographics of Occupy Wall Street, which we've been talking about for probably the last two months um, on FilterFreeRadio.com. Um, I think I think this Occupy you know protest and movement is is the news. It's the elephant in the room, and as it should be. Um, and I want you to uh, tell us a little bit about the about the website, and um, and let's get into this. I'm excited. Yeah, well, what I found was that fastcompany.com, I actually threw it up in the, in the chat room before I came on the air. And what they do is they break down uh, who these people are. And I think this is the, one of the most important things that we have to do is break down who these people are because the right wing, the conservative wing, is going to attack these people on a personal level. And they've been doing it since day one. They've been calling them hippies, druggies, and all kinds of other things. Um, hey, I killed a messenger. Yeah, exactly. They try and, and, and do exactly what you just said, kill the messenger, and they've never debated the demands, and that's something that I think is very important to bring to the forefront. They will not bring to the forefront the demands of Occupy Wall Street, which is regulate the financial industry, um, outsourcing of our jobs, all those things, bring back Glass-Steagall, audit the Fed, all those things that, that ring true to every sector of our community, every sector of our country. Uh, whether you're a Ron Paul supporter or a Bernie Sanders supporter, it's going to ring true. And they won't 
bring that to the forefront. Instead, they'll call him, oh, look, you know, this one guy spray painted a, a uh, you know, statue. Uh, see, they're all bad. That's what they're going to do. Yep. So what I did and what I, what I found was at Fast Company, it says they aren't all kids. It says the Generation X, the boomers, and older are also in on it. One-third of the respondents to the poll that they did was older than 35 years old, and one-fifth is older than 45. Wow. Um, you've heard this all the time. Uh, why don't these people just get a job? You know, they're all a bunch of lazy punks. At, um, even at uh, the Occupy, one of the protests, um, the conservatives were actually down there handing out job applications as kind of a mock, you know, to... Yeah. So crazy. I, I, I've heard that. I've heard, I think it was, uh, I forget where it was, but they were handing out, like, McDonald's applications. Oh, um, I think that might have been in Oakland. I think they were doing that in Oakland. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable, yeah. So what they found in, in this poll was uh, half of the respondents to the poll are already... Uh, employed full time, and an additional twenty percent work part time. So, just thirteen. They found just thirteen point one percent are unemployed. It's really not a lot over the national average. Hmm. You know, wow. especially if you're talking about you know college age kids. Most of them, uh, the uh, unemployment for college aged uh, graduates, or if you're in college, is pretty high. It's uh, substantially higher than the national average. Sure. Well, you know, Mike and Raleigh in the chat room says research shows that the Occupy Wall Street crowd has more jobs than the tea baggers. <laughs> Probably. Well, most, most of the tea most of the tea party guys they usually retired and are on Social Security and Medicare, so <laughs> it would make sense that they have <laughs> more employment. Yeah, Mike stands by it. He says it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and if Mike says it, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> well, you, you know, a poll of your recent was it Pew Research or something came out that said 61% of Americans agree with Occupy Wall Street? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a majority of Americans agree with this movement at, at the very beginnings of a movement, which has never happened in history. Most movements start out and they're only, you know, fringe. They're not very, not very, it doesn't encompass, you know, even a 20%, but this is 60% uh, of the population agrees with, with, their, with their grievances. Right, absolutely. And that's one thing that the, the right wing is going to continue to try and fight then they don't want them to become the political force that the Tea Party did. Because if that happens, you'll counteract. I mean, essentially, we're going to end up foreclosing on the Tea Party and evicting them from the people's house, and they don't want to do that. Yeah, we want a new deal. What's that? I said we want a new, new deal. Yeah, that's exactly. We need to reinstate the new deal. Exactly. It's been completely Wait. dismantled. Yeah, I want, to, I want my new deal back, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want to bring back Glass-Steagall and separate the, uh, the commercial banks from the investment houses and all that other stuff. But the other thing, um, going down the list that they have, they say tax the rich. That's one of Occupy Wall Street's uh, slogans, one of their demands. About 15% of the occupiers in this poll earn between $50,000 and $80,000 annually. Uh, 13% earn over 75000 And nearly 2% bring in more than $150,000 a year. Wow. You know, this website, the, the website that I'm referring to is not like some fringe. It's a, you know, a technology, uh, like a, like a scientific, I guess a scientific. You're talking about Fast Company? Uh, yeah, yeah Fast Company. Yeah, Fast Company is a tech, tech magazine that comes yeah. out every month. Yeah, this is, this is from, directly from them. This is one of their polls that they did. Um, it said it may be a party, but not that kind of, of a party. It says the, uh, the movement is often identified as liberal. Uh, even Democrat-dominated cause, but just 27% of respondents call themselves Democrats, and 2.4% of Republicans, the rest, call themselves independents. Yeah, well, you know, the conservative thing about it all is that they're calling for the restoration of the rule of law. They're calling for these people to be tried and, you know, and, and actually held account to, the, to their grievances and the, the, the laws that they've broken, uh, and yet that's conservative by nature, so it really appeals to everybody. It should. It absolutely should. We need to bring... Teddy Roosevelt, the original progressive, said, the, the small business, the average businessman will like me. He said that because he will go after the, the trust, he will go after the monopolies that make business and the economy unfair to them. So when he went after the, the monopolies and busted them up, it helped the small business guy. 
And that's exactly what the progressive movement is about. It's about trying to get rid of these trusts that are on Wall Street that are controlling everything. And another one of the big demands that Occupy Wall Street has that nobody on the right wing will talk about is the fact that they want to get political money, well, their money, out, Wall Street's money, out of the political system. Amen. Uh, Dylan Radigan, I just just to plug Dylan because I, I do like um, some of his mad as hell moment rants. Uh, he started a new campaign, a new amendment called Get Money Out, GetMoneyOut.com, which is that's strictly what it's about. Yeah, I, I love his rant that I heard the other day. <laughs> I, I I play I play. Um, we actually have a Dylan Radigan open that when he when he had his mad as hell blow up on air, we we play that occasionally, um, uh, which is which was brilliant, you know. And it's and it's just showcasing um, uh, the simple fact that everyone is sick and tired. Everyone everyone's fed up, and you know, sick always comes before tired. But everyone's just fed up. Everyone's uh, sick of the garbage that's going on. We if if you if you want America to be the way it used to be. Tax a millionaire, support a union, and buy American. Yep. There you go. That's the bottom line, I mean, especially when you see uh, so many jobs going overseas. I mean, we can go over this over and over and over again. Yeah. The, um, the whole thing is, is that Occupy Wall Street is going to clean up. If they can clean up themselves, like you were talking about before I came on, uh, what's going on in Portland, we cannot allow this to happen uh, in the Occupy movement. What I would like to see is more of a, especially during the winter months, now I'm, I'm thinking on, on a physical level, that they disband, they disband during the winter months, especially in the north, because you're going to have a lot of people uh, getting sick, maybe even you know, frostbite, all kinds of other things. Yeah. Why don't we go out, Occupy Wall Street, and march every weekend, a thousand, a thousand people every weekend, and just march and then go home. Don't camp out. And then when springtime comes, and springtime, you know, it's, the, the warm weather starts to break out. Everybody come out in droves again, just in time to sway the election and hold Barack Obama's feet to the fire also, because he is just as guilty as the Republican Party is in regards to political contributions. Amen, brother. Amen to that, brother. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. We, we talked a little bit about this on Friday uh, when we did Open Lines. Um, we were uh, talking to our friend, uh, we were talking to Sheila, is that who called in? I can't remember who called yeah, in. Yeah, Sheila called in. But she was worried, uh, concerned that, you know, the Occupy rallies might, you know, start breaking up because of cold weather. And my solution to a certain degree was, hey, well, hey, all you warm states, it, you know, keep on keeping on, you know, in California, you know, yep. uh, Nevada, uh, uh, Texas, wherever you can, Florida. I think it's also important to to note, like you, like uh, Scott, that you had mentioned the Pew poll uh, recently that came out that says sixty one percent of Americans agree with the movement, even if the momentum kind of dies out in the winter, as we're all kind of anticipating it. You know, um, more or less will do. I think the movement's going to pick right back up. I was actually talking with Louise, who is actually the real master behind the scenes here at, at Tom Hartman program. But she, Louise was explaining to me that most of these cycles, most of these movements, do not. Uh, uh, have a path of just going straight up. They they go up and then down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Just like the stock market. Just like you know anything. It, it's it's not a continuous solid growth pattern up. You know you are going to see little dips and bumps and 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 roadblocks here and there. Yeah, fits and starts. Exactly. Yeah. What what did she say about the? Is she referring to the, maybe the civil rights movement in the sixties? Uh yeah. She was uh in historic references exactly and comparing uh. To, today's Occupy Wall Street movement to things like the, the women's movement, um, uh, voter rights, um, civil rights, etc. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Unlike the Tea Party that was just fits and fits and fits <laughs> and then a big long nap. <laughs> well, it was a, what do you call AstroTurf? Not real grassroots. They're, no. they're in the timeout corner now. <laughs> yeah, they're still being heavily funded with Dick Army and Koch Brothers money. So You know, un unfortunately, I, you know, I have to say, when, when the Tea Party started, I was 110% behind them. Because they were fed up with the bailouts. Right. That's what started them off. But as soon as they, like I, I've said it on my show, I've never seen them protest on Wall Street. Never once did oh. I see the Tea Party Express bus on Wall Street protesting at the fact that they are at the, uh, the trough of the American taxpayer. Well, you, you know, my, um, Ray, my big problem with uh, the, the Tea Party was that why, why not sooner? Why did you wait so long? Uh, until, you know, we had a black president. Why then? You yeah. know, 
It, yeah. it, and I don't I, even think it was really a black president. I think it was more along a, a, the lines of a Democrat. Sure. Yeah. I, you know, but, you know, there were some, you know, oh, absolutely. some of them in there. But, you, you know, and I, I went to the one of the Tea Party rallies in Cleveland and I asked him, I said, well, do, did you even consider protesting the Iraq war before we got into that? Because I, I suppose that's sort of a bailout in its own right. Um, but, uh, you know, or at least a, at the very least a money pit that's going to cost human lives uh, to, to a greater degree. But they were like, no, we never thought about that. No, of course not. And then, you know what, when. If, if Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich, or any of the others, except, with the exception of John Huntsman and Ron Paul, if they get in, uh, th- we're going to have another war. We're going to have another war with Iran because they've all said it. Michelle Bachman, she's the, the loony. Uh, she looks like she's always glazed over. With, she looks like a honey-glazed donut. Whenever <laughs> into the, the, the lights are on, but no one's home. That's, that's, it, man. <laughs> that's the whole thing with, with the Tea Party. What I see is they're going to go back into the woodwork once the Republican gets in, and we're going to go to war. We're going to, there's, there's three ways, three paths that we're going to take uh, with the war in Iran if, if a Republican gets in. Number one, we're going to borrow money. All right? Where's gonna, where is the outrage going to come from? It's not going to come from the Tea Party. I can guarantee you they're going to sit back and say, you know what? Yeah, that's right. You're going, we're going to go. We're going to wrap themselves up in the flag and sing patriotic songs and say kumbaya around the president. That's number one. They're either going to borrow money. They're going to raise taxes to pay for the war. We know that's not going to happen. Or they're going to cut the social programs that help the poor and the middle class people. Those are the three ways that they're going to pay for this war. Either through borrowed money, cutting social programs that help middle income people and the poor, Mm -hmm. or raise taxes. And that's that's really the essence of your your most recent piece over at... um at uh, Politicus USA. Um, and if you're just joining us, we're, uh, we're speaking with Ray Medeiros, Ray Medeiros um, of, of uh, USA Progressive with uh, Ray Medeiros, the website usa-progressive.blogspot.com. And, um, and Medeiros, not the easiest name to spell, M-E-D-E-I-R-O-S. Uh, go- type him into the Googles, and he, he, uh, it comes up. He's also on Facebook and Twitter, um, and we'll post all of those links at uh, filterfreeradio.com. Dot com um, and he's and helping us occupy the airwaves. Occupy the airwaves. That's right. Um, and we were talking a little bit about the um, the uh, fastcompany.com website about ba- breaking down the demographics of Occupy Wall Street, and I think that's crucially important to help maintain the movement, to help grow the movement, to help strengthen the movement. If you know anything about marketing. Um, uh, I've, I took uh, classes, kind of an all-around radio expert in you know, promotions and marketing, and you have to know your, your demographics, your target audience, and how to you know, send the best message to your best target in order to get the best outcome. And I think at this point in the stage, you know, uh, Occupy Wall Street is over the initial building movement. We've got the numbers now. We've got the support. Initially, 61% are with us in the country. I think it's time to start thinking about how we can strengthen the movement um, and breaking down demographics and focusing on that is a brilliant way to do it. And, and Ray, thanks so much for bringing this. This is actually something that we haven't even touched on yet. And we've been talking about Occupy Wall Street for two months. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have, they have a lot of demands. We gotta, you, you know, you've got to cover and bring that up to the forefront, and that's number one. That's what will bring the, the American people behind us. Absolutely. Yeah, amen, Ray. Amen. You know? I mean, that's the thing. It's important to point out that the, you know, the, the, the slogan of the 99% is probably the most brilliant thing I've ever heard in a while because it's, it's, it's actually 99.9 even or 99.4, whatever you want to be. But it's, uh, the fact of the matter is that even the cops – and everybody else and the civil servants are all on, you know, if you're not rich, you're, you're, you're really struggling like the rest of us. And right. so the more people accept that and realize that, the more they're inclined to actually get out of their house and say, well, I can't afford to go to the movies this weekend or I can't afford to spend any money. I might as well go down to the court, you know, to the town square and protest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Me and my buddy Saul, we were going back and forth a little bit today, and he heard a statistic. Warren Buffett, he's, he's investing heavily today in uh, IBM. He's worth sixty. billion billion dollars. Now, I'm from Massachusetts. Our state budget is $32 billion. Wow. So he just cut his income, his wealth in half, and he'd be able to fund the state of Massachusetts and still have $30 billion left over. Uh, he's not even nearly the richest man in the world either. No. no. Wow. That's disgusting. That's amazing. It, it's unbelievable. Now, luckily, he's on our side when it comes to a lot of things where he believes that we should be taking care of the poor and taking care of, you know, health care and all that. But there are some, like the Koch brothers and all the rest of them, they are just selfish pigs. 
Yeah, yeah they're psychopaths. They for themselves. They, try, they, they will outsource the jobs to the lowest wage country. They will uh, try and cut corners to make our environment as, as filthy as possible in order to increase their own profit and their own personal wealth with mm-hmm. no regard whatsoever to the, to the community that, they, that we live in. Yeah, it's a real us versus them mentality. Yeah, that's the Ayn Rand uh, selfishness kind of. Yeah, that, that's the Don't whole joke about that. Don't get me started on Ayn Rand. Yeah. <laughs> me versus we, baby. Me versus we. That's why it frustrates me when people say, oh, this is just uh, the retort, I guess, from the right would be that this is just uh, class warfare. And, and the answer really is, that, yeah, class warfare began. Uh, it's always been class warfare. In fact, the matter is the rest of us haven't been fighting back. Right. We, we've yeah. been lulled to, uh, lulled to sleep with easy credit through the 80s. That's, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Yep. And it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. <laughs> it's time to wake up. Um, Ray Ray Maderos, I want to thank you again so much, bud, for coming on the program. And we're definitely going to get you back on. Um, maybe even next week we'll talk and, and we'll hook up. And and uh, I want to mention again, Ray's uh, USA Progressive with Ray Maderos, the website usa progressive.blogspot.com he is live monday through friday five days a week 11 a.m eastern find him on twitter at ray madero show also on facebook it's the same name and again he uh, writes uh, quite frequently over at politicususa.com ray thank you again buddy you are the best thank you very much Jacob. <laughs> thank you man we'll t- we'll talk soon and you we'll definitely get you back on the program bud Awesome. Yeah. I look forward to it. Ray, Scotty, Kenny. Ray, have you have an, a, an open invitation to come on Turn Up the Night anytime as well. Awesome. Awesome. I'll be looking forward to it. And, I, and Bud, I would join you on the program too, Bud, but I'm just, that's, I'm in the middle of crunch time for Hartman. And I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work something out. You know, I'm actually going to be taking a couple of days vacation off. So um, I'll, I'll get in touch with you, Bud, and, and we'll figure something out. So. All right, sounds great. All right, brother. Again, thanks again. Uh, if you're just joining us, Ray Maderos, that's USA Progressive with Ray Maderos. Ray, again, thank you so much for coming on, bud. Thanks, bud. <laughs> uh, Ray, uh, uh, a round of applause. Let go, let's fire that off. <laughs> Yeah, good stuff, Ray. And I and I do again want to thank Ray for all of his contributions to the Tom Hartman program, which he does so brilliantly. Uh, get over to Ray's, Ray's website, check out his show, and support Ray. Support indep- independent progressive media. When we come back, we'll have an update live from Portland, Oregon, Occupy Portland. Also, we're going to get an update from Occupy Denver. And uh, a couple other things I've got up my sleeves, and they're rolled up, so you don't even know what's going on. Filter Free Radio. We'll be right back. Giggity, giggity. Giggity, giggity. Have you been waiting for a show that gives you the real news you need to know? Have you been waiting for a show that reports the truth and isn't afraid to call it as it is? I've been waiting for that show too and it's not coming from the mainstream media it's not coming from the bought and sold corporate media it's not coming from the news networks that only look out for profits and their bottom lines they all speak through filters that's why you need filter free news that's why you need filter free radio filter free radio is your new news headquarters for exactly what's going on and just exactly what we need to do about it we must move forward move forward with us filter free radio live mondays 7 to 9 p.m eastern on the Ustream home of nicole sandler radio or not.com and the all new filter free radio.com It's one thing to be addicted to a drug, but it's worse to be hooked because someone else is addicted. The someone in this case is Bank of America, along with J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and other members of the Big Bankers gang. The drug they're hooked on is one they love, rely on, and have no desire to shake. Consumer fees. Such assessments on their own customers are now a major source of income in their banking systems, and they're more creative than other kinds of junkies in finding ways to get more of the stuff. One especially infuriating creation by these fee junkies is one that hooks you to their addiction, Internet banking. To draw you in, they initially offered free online bill paying, electronic deposits, etc. Sign up with us, they purred. We're here to serve you. Millions were lured in. But then, gotcha. Free soon turned into fees. 
Well, customers could just move their Internet business to another bank, right? Not so simple. The banks have deliberately wired their technology to make it a pain in the rear for anyone to switch. Instead of just click on Move, you have to disentangle each one of your electronic transactions separately. Your various credit card accounts, print payments, utility bills, etc., etc. One fellow who tried to move from Bank of America says he was so overwhelmed by the complications of switching dozens of his online arrangements that he gave up. I'm really annoyed, he told the New York Times, but someone at Bank of America made that calculation. This is Jim Hightower saying, Representative Brad Miller, having made his own calculation that consumers should be able to move at will, has introduced a bill in Congress to make it easier for customers to free themselves from their bank's fee addiction. For information, go to Representative Miller's website, www.bradmiller.house.gov. If you like these feisty pops of populism that Hightower zings out on the airwaves, check out the Hightower Lowdown. Jim's monthly newsletter provides the in-depth lowdown on what the greed heads of Wall Street and the bone heads of Washington are doing to us behind the scenes. With Hightower's saucy Texas humor and truth-telling populist perspective, the lowdown literally can lift you up. And get this, you can have the lowdown delivered to your mailbox or email each month for only $15 a year. Yes, 12 issues, only 15 bucks. Check it out, HightowerLowdown.org. This is Jackson Brown, and you're listening to The Nicole Sandler Show. This is Melissa Etheridge, and you're listening to my friend, Nicole Sandler. Hey, this is Rob with Matchbox 20. Hey, this is Chris Isaac. Hi, this is Suzanne Vega. Hey, this is Trey Anastasio, and you're listening to my friend, Nicole Sandler. Bare Naked Ladies, you're listening to Nicole Sandler. What's up? This is Howie Day, and you're listening to Nicole Sandler. Hey, this is Henry. And I'm Jojo. And I'm Ringo. And we're Lost Lonely Boys, and you're, you're listening, listening to Nicole Sandler. This is Kelly from Stereophonics, and you're listening to Nicole Sandler. This is Evan Dando of The Lemonheads, and you're listening to Nicole Sandler. Hi, my name's Jonathan Brook, and you're listening to Nicole Sandler. This is Pat Monahan from the band Train, and you're listening to Nicole Sandler. This is Ziggy Marley, and you're listening to Nicole Sandler. Hey, this is Pete Yorn, and you're listening to Nicole Sandler. The lovely Nicole Sandler. Nicole Sandler. Nicole is awesome. The Nicole Sandler Show at RadioOrNot.com. Music to my ears. This is it. You're listening to Jacob Dean. Most of our leaders have either sold out, caved in, gave up. They don't want to tell people the truth. If you're looking for filters, you came to the wrong place. They're too concerned about their careers. They're too concerned about success. They're too concerned about just winning the next election for their status. We bring you the real stuff. This is Filter Free Radio with Jacob Dean. But who wants to tell the truth? The condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. If you don't talk about poverty, you're not telling the truth. You're not talking about working people being pushed against the wall with corporate profits high. You're not telling the truth. You're listening to Jacob. If you're not talking about the criminal activity on Wall Street and not one person going to jail yet, you're not telling the truth. Filter Free Radio with Jacob Dean on the Ustream home of Nicole Sandler, Radio or Not, and FilterFreeRadio.com. And we live now in revolutionary times, but the counter revolution Revolution is winning. Live every Monday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have a new wave of truth telling. We're going to have a new wave of witness bearing. And we're going to teach the younger generation that these brothers didn't struggle in vain, just like John Brown and Nat Turner and Marcus Garvey and Martin King and Miles Horton and the others didn't. And we shall see what happens. We might get crushed too. But you know what? Then you just go down swinging like Elephant Jerry Muhammad Ali. <laughs> And welcome back to the second hour of Filter Free Radio. My name is Jacob Dean. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C., nation's capital. I'm looking at 8.04 on the East Coast. It is 5.04 on the West Coast. Um, And on the West Coast, uh, folks in Portland have been having a heck of a time down there at Occupy Portland. It's kind of been the uh, the centerpiece um, of of the show. I think uh, is really important to get into this. I'm going to get into this. Uh, let me first of all say, uh, well, welcome back, skeptical Scott, co-host of Filter Free Radio, and Kenny Pick, turn up the night, super duper mass producer, um, and all around awesome 
freaking awesome guy. Um, Kenny, I love you. Just for the oh, record, I want to say that right on the back, brother. Can I make a, a quick addendum to last hour? Oh yeah, yeah. Of Tom course. Shave Schaefer uh, let us know that the uh, McDonald's applications were being passed out by bankers in Occupy Chicago. Oh. <laughs> and a tip of the hat to Tom Schaefer, the um, the uh, news ninja of Turn Up the Night. Is Intrepid right? co-host. Intrepid co-host. Official progressive thespian. Yes, sir. All of the above. Tom is wonderful. Everyone, you know what? Real quick, let's give a shout out to everyone in the chat room because all of you are wonderful. <laughs> Um, and let me st- start off at the top of the list with Ray Medeiros, who was just joining us. Um, and Ray, we're going to definitely get you back on the program, but Ray's brilliant. Go check him out. USA Progressive with Ray Medeiros, the website USA Progressive. Um, yeah, good stuff, Ray. Thanks for coming on, man. Dot yeah, blog- fantastic. Dot, dot blogspot.com. Excuse me. Um, and yes, thank you, Ray, again. And um, I want to shift gears real quick and talk about something very near and dear to my heart, my hometown, uh, Portland, Oregon, Occupy Portland, and it's gotten kind of out of hand. Um, I actually got the first news update, breaking news, sent to me by my uh, sweetheart, Carmen, uh, on Thursday about noon, 1230, um, when Mayor Adams gave the uh, encampment eviction notice and then uh, moved forward with that. And I want to welcome to the program uh, someone who's very, very, uh, he's uh, he's in the chat room. He's a chat room regular here on Filter Free Radio. You can, uh, well, actually, I want to, Finish off my chat room here. Shout outs real quick. A W O P Radio. A WAP Radio. A WAP. Uh, Johnny Double O. Kenny Pick. Oregon Fish. Ray's Ray Madero still hanging out in the chat. If uh, if you liked Ray, give him a shout out there in the chat. Uh, Sage Horse. Shadow Man. Skeptical Scott. Snork. Y two K. The Maestro. Hey Maestro. Tom Shave Schaefer and Vic and Will. I also want to give a tip of the hat to Vic and Will who both called in. Um, to Filter Free Radio. Hi, Vic. Hey, Will. How's it going, guys? And um, if you're if you're following the list in the chat, you may notice I skipped somebody. And the reason I skipped that person is because I'm welcoming them to the program now, Mr. J.D. Fishin, live all the way from uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, J.D., can you hear me? Hey, guys. How you doing? It's a pleasure to be on. Hey, um, a little bit of dis- uh, disclosure. Uh, J.D. is my dad. Dad, thanks for coming on the program. Hey, son. Uh, it's good to be on. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> doing well, doing well. And thanks for joining us. Uh, Kenny Pick and Scott are here with me, if you'd like to say hello, guys. Hey, Scott. Kenny, how you doing, guys? Excellent. Thanks for coming on, guys. Greetings. Great. Great. We've, we've got, uh, we've got uh, literally, as we speak, we've got someone from Portland, Oregon, Cleveland, Ohio, and Washington, D.C., all on the show at the same time. So that was brilliant. And just a couple minutes ago, Ray was from uh, Massachusetts. I mean, this is, we're talking countrywide interactions here on Filter Free Radio. From sea to shining sea. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the mix. <laughs> um, and and Dad, the reason that I had you on, or wanted to, you know, ask you to come on and uh, talk a little bit about what uh, you know what you've seen going down, um, what's been happening down at, at Occupy Portland. And if you're if you're just joining us here on Filter Free Radio, um, we've been talking about this a little bit in the first hour. The mayor of Portland, Oregon, Sam Adams, gave uh, the Occupy Portland protest encampment a an eviction notice. Uh, last week, and basically they said uh, Saturday night at midnight, we're going to come in, clear out the parks. Things have gotten out of hand. He said, quote, Mayor Adams says, quote, crime, especially reported assaults, has increased in the area. Occupy has had a considerable time to share its movement's message with the public, but has lost control of the camps it has created. And that was kind of the general consensus that I was getting from some of my friends on Facebook, people in Portland who I've, who I've talked to about this. Um, I want to read real quick from an article of OregonLive.com. Oregon Live is, is kind of the Oregonian's website online. You go check it out. It's a pretty good website. Um, uh, Helen Jung from the Oregonian on Sunday um, at 11 p.m. wrote, this is right after the, the, the crackdown, she writes, Portland police successfully have cleared the two downtown parks where protesters have camped out since October 6th. 
And the evictions had sparked a kind of a standoff between protesters. Uh, a lot of people um, kind of gathered around Pioneer Courthouse Square, uh, which is, um, if you're not familiar with Portland, Pioneer Courthouse Square is kind of the, the living room of downtown Portland, if you will. Um, and one of the one of the um, Occupy uh, Portland organizers says, uh, you know, the parks are gone, but the consensus, the consciousness, excuse me, uh, has not died. And you know, we will have momentum, um, and we need to channel it in more, you know, proper ways. And um, and the reason, Dad, that I wanted to ask you to come on is I know that you, you know, you watch the news a little bit, and um, you've probably heard what's been, you know, what the, what the news has been reported in, in Portland, and I, I think it's important to note that you, your local news medias and, and outlets and things will report things differently um, or, you know, cover different subject matters um, locally rather than, like, for example, the people in Portland who are covering the Portland stories will see it a different way than someone from Washington, D.C. trying to report on what's happening in Portland. So I wanted to get someone on who's been there. Well, actually, you haven't been down to the protest, but you've been seeing what's going on. And um, uh, just curious on what you've been seeing on the news, Dad, and, and tell us a little bit about, um, you know, kind of what you've experienced, what you've seen, what you think and what you feel. And, um, and also I want to get into uh, Mayor Sam Adams' most recent news conference that he, he just held a couple hours ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. A little bit after uh, two o'clock today, uh, Portland time, uh, the mayor came on with a news conference with the uh, police chief and uh, discussed uh, what it had gone on uh, with the eviction notice of, of the folks down there. Um, uh, he he was pretty candid and nice about uh, giving uh, a heads up uh, ahead of time uh, to let them know three days ahead. The way he explained it, that uh, they were going to be coming in and uh, clearing the parks. Uh, due to the the problems that were uh, being caused and the crime and so on and so forth, you're getting but, uh, out of hand, you know. And uh, it it uh, it started out good the first few you know days weeks. Uh, then it seemed like uh, it got pretty chaotic. Uh, so you know, disorderly conduct, people being assaulted. Uh, so it became started becoming an issue. Sure. Um, he uh, he is more he is in favor of the occupancy uh, Wall Street uh, movement. Uh, he did say on air at the conference that uh, Wall Street should be a little more responsible in taking some of the blame of what has been going on uh, with yeah. all the, the occupancy movements going on and the protests. Um, I, I, uh, I absolutely agree. And I also agree with Mayor Adams stepping in at this point and saying, OK, guys, you know, I agree with the movement. I agree with the message. I think what you're doing is a good thing. And I also want to mention that Mayor Sam Adams is a is a, you know, a progressive. He's a liberal. He's on the left. He's not some, you know, like boogeyman, conservative, um, you know, right, Scott, right. Scott, right. Scott yeah, Walker, so. bad guy. Yes, uh, Portland and Oregon is one of the highest progressive states in the country, uh, along with uh, Seattle and uh, I'm sure down in California and what. Um, he did also mention uh, some of the uh, some of the issues that were at hand of uh, uh, the problems they were having. Uh, as far as uh, I guess I did mention some of that, but uh, well, no, that's um, I think that's uh, really important to note that. You know, the mayor's actually on the side of the protesters, and, yes, and, yes. and that's a whole different angle rather than you have just some wackadoodle mayor who's just trying to shut down the movement to shut down the movement. Or like, that, like that, Oakland. Yeah, and that's why they, they kind of give them a three-day, uh, say, eviction notice to uh, let them be aware of what's going to be coming down, you know, and that there has been so many problems going on, and it's become an issue with folks. And so, you know, uh, people are almost getting scared, you know, to be around the area down there. And so uh, they they didn't quite come in at 12.01 a.m. Sunday morning. They waited later in the morning. Uh, folks were moving out uh, peacefully and what. They did have uh, uh, one confrontation, I guess, one of the police officers was talking about. Uh, they did make uh, 51 arrests. Uh, folks, after they did close the uh, parks and what for trespassing, disorderly conduct, uh, one officer was hurt. Uh, I guess mm. he broke, had his leg broke or something. Someone threw mm. a projectile and hit him, and I 
think he was uh, a patrol officer on a horse. <sighs> and uh, so He's the one who got one, hit with the bottle rocket. So, something like that, yeah. <laughs> one, uh, one person from the protest was hurt, hospitalized. Uh, yeah. Other than that, uh, he, he was glad that it, it went peacefully as it did. Uh, he was thanking uh, the police agencies, the social service groups, the park bureaus for helping out and the way they handled things. Things didn't get too out of hand as far as heavy violence, I guess. Um, if I can, really quick, let me play this really short clip. It's only 15 seconds long. And again, I want to give a tip of the hat and shout out to uh, super duper mass producer Kenny Pick <laughs> for uh, sending this, this clip. This is um, uh, Portland police officer Pete Simpson uh, speaking on this, uh, on, on clearing the park. Uh, listen to this. Basically, when the sun came up, Lounsdale Square was pretty much empty. Most people had packed up and took their structures and left. Uh, the Parks Bureau helped clean up the rest of it. Where we're at now is the Parks Bureau is fencing off uh, and has fenced off both parks and is removing all the debris. And, and again, kind of continuing on what you're saying, Dad, is that, you know, they, they kind of gave him a heads up a few days ahead. They said, look, you know, we're going to be coming in around this time. And they didn't come in at 12.01 and, and kick no. everybody out and arrest everyone. No, and, no. They, uh, you know, they weren't in right gear. It's like it's some of the uh, movements you see the, coming from uh, from the different places, you know. I mean, the riot cops out there beating on people, you know. And, right. Uh, they, were, they were pretty content. And... Uh, so it, all in all, it turned out pretty good. Uh, I guess it was turned into a, a real muddy mess. According to the news, you can see on there that uh, things were getting pretty pretty bad, pretty nasty as far as sanitation wise and all, and uh, the wet, muddy weather. And uh, and we're we're actually expecting that they're talking Thursday, maybe a light snow here anyway. Oh wow! So, you know, it, it's uh, just in time for Jacob to come home for Thanksgiving, huh? There you go. Buddy. <laughs> but, uh, well, and also also tonight the protest groups, uh, the movement groups. Uh, I guess they are going to meet in Pioneer Courthouse Square. Okay. And uh, at seven o'clock tonight, and uh, discuss further of, of the movement and whether what level they're going to go to, and and where they're going to be staging. So, and uh, I'll, I'll mention the website for Occupy Portland. It's occupyportland.org. If you're interested, they do have a live stream up. You can watch what's happening uh, right now. But I wouldn't go there at least for about another forty-five minutes. You don't want to leave Filter Free Radio. Um, <laughs> and. <laughs> Um, and and I want to make two more points, Dad. While while we still have you on the phone, I think kind of the the big picture here is that um, in order for and and this movement isn't something that's just you know it's not it didn't just start today and it's going to end tomorrow. This is theoretically a, a pretty you know a movement that has longevity to it. And in order for a movement to sustain longevity like Occupy Wall Street is trying to do, it is almost a necessity for it to have the support of the community around it. It cannot survive, it cannot thrive without the support of the community around it. And if you become destructive and you riot and you, you, know, you cause damage and you destroy property and you have confrontations with police, um, that's not really gaining the support of the community around you and you're ultimately killing yourself and you're killing the movement. That's for sure, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, Oregon and Portland has one of the highest environmental activist groups uh, in the nation. I mean... Uh, Proud product <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're uh, anti-logging, anti-development, anti anti no, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, and, 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 then it, and then some of the, the, the bad apples, let's say, uh, sure. unfortunately get mixed in with the, the, the peaceful protesters and then create chaos and problems, you know, and, and, and that's unfortunate. And again, Dad, I want to thank you again for, for coming on and, and giving this update on Occupy Portland. I want to ask you one, uh, kind of touch on one more thing, and you're talking about the environment there. Um, you, uh, your, your expertise is actually in the, in the environment, per se, um, as a, as a, a landscape um, a horticulturalist. horticulturalist. Um, I can never say that word. And, <laughs> and um, uh, you have the green thumb. I mean, uh, my dad has known everything about trees, the plants to shrubs to soils to fertilizers to he i mean that's what that's that's what you've done and as one of the concerns of actually these parks and parks all over the all over the country at these movements are these and you, and it's just it is what it is but the occupiers are actually kind of destroying you know the parks they're they're um you know the grasses and the trees and things like that have you have you 
um, seen anything like that, or uh, or is there anything like that? Have they talked about anything like that in Portland? Uh, yes, they they did uh, show on the news there. They did have uh, one of the city arbors down there inspecting some of the uh, American elms uh, that down in the park block uh, parks there, uh, and they're a highly sensitive tree that uh, are real susceptible to you know Dutch elm disease and and whatnot so they 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 keep a close eye on those trees to try to keep their health up and uh they were concerned about uh, possible damage to the trees and and or the the uh the root structure of the trees even with the compaction of the folks and the wet soils and and so there's a eh, concern there uh you know probably not, not probably nothing too significant no, but it's no, there uh, no they like i say they did bring in the folks there to uh check everything out and make sure everything's okay and, and it looks like everything's going to be all right you know it might be next spring till they get the grass back but hey sure. you know that's it's, it's not really <laughs> that, an issue at hand the issue at hand is is uh you know the wall street folks uh, need to uh realize what's going on and uh, acknowledge you know the people aren't going to take it anymore. Amen. <laughs> and, <Yes>. and, <laughs> amen. I was, I was going to say, so is it comparable to just leaving a whole bunch of kiddie pools on your lawn for like uh, a month or so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, maybe. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, sorry. <laughs> no. That's, but, uh, that's you know, and they did, they did say, you know, what the, what the city, they, they brought in uh, other folks, other agencies to help. Help uh, control, uh, you know, nonviolence or violent folks, you know, and what uh, they, you know, for dollars wise, they said they spent over what the heck? I, I made some notes here. Uh, just this weekend alone, I guess they they spent over four hundred fifty thousand dollars in overtime and wow. uh, in uh, services rendered mm. just to help keep uh, keep the you know the folks at bay or the, you know the bad ones you know sure uh, and they acknowledge that too you know there's a there's a lot of peaceful protesters out there and you know they had a lot of good dialect uh, conversation with them and it's just the few bad apples the uh, the ones that are um, shouldn't be there basically yeah. uh, causing the problems you know absolutely well our official occupy portland uh reporter updater uh and um regular uh guest in the chat room you can you can give him a shout uh, out in the chat room jd fishin uh dad thanks so much for for coming on the show giving us an update and uh you know we'll be in touch and if if you know if something comes up with occupy portland we'll uh, we'll, we'll have you back on thank you guys for having me on oh, okay yeah. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Official horticulturalist too, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank I can you. Say it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to make a horticulturalist jingle for for Dad. Okay, Dad. Again, thanks thanks for coming on. We'll see you in chat room here in just a minute. Thank you, guys. Take care. Uh, okay. Right, bye bye. Man. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah. Horticulturalist. That's you a know, word I haven't heard. Spoken to more of your family in the past couple weeks than I have. <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> you know, <laughs> choking, a, choking on my tie. <laughs> and if any of my family is listening right now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kenny loves you. Kenny, <laughs> Kenny loves you. Um, and so we've we've got uh, we've got a couple of minutes here before the break. Um, I'll get your guys' thoughts on this, and then I've got a a clip of Eric Cantor that we have to play before the break that oh. we can we can all riff on. So I'm sure you do. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case, without further ado. Um, I you know I, I try not to play too many clips of Republicans on on the show, but uh, this is uh, this is that's my job on Turn Up the Night. So. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and Kenny does a damn fine job of doing that um, because I'm not as funny as Kenny is, and I can't riff you know and and make comedy bits out of these things as well as Kenny can. Um, this bit kind of uh, writes itself; doesn't need any. Um, Huzzah! But uh, <laughs> um, Eric Cantor got mic checked at Rice University. I don't know if you if you've seen this yet, Ken or, or Scott. No, uh, I'm 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 uh, my curiosity has peaked. This is good stuff, man. I, hey, Houston, Texas, of all places. Yes, Occupy Houston in Texas. Uh, also, another side note uh, where um, some of my family's from from Texas. So. I uh, want to mention that, but uh, Eric Cantor got mic checked, and I found this video. It's, it was on the top of democraticunderground.com, democraticunderground.com this morning. I'm not sure if it's still there, but it's floating around. Just Google, if you want to find the video, Google Eric Cantor gets mic checked. And uh, I just, I love that he gets mic checked. So, um, again, and by the way, mic check or mic checked refers to the people's mic, which is a way of... Microphone. 
Yes, the people's mic, the people's microphone, a way of communication for the Occupy uh, members. Let's listen to Eric Cantor getting mic checked at Rice University. This is funny. You'll like this. Please join me in welcoming Majority Leader Eric Cantor to Rice University. Good morning. does not include the right to interfere with the expressions and ideas with which you disagree. I should have told you, Kitty, to cue up the droopy dog. <laughs> he sounds just like droopy dog. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it, it goes on for another whole nother like two minutes like that with the um, Occupy protesters, you know, chanting and and the um, the kind of moder- uh, moderator there trying to Rassle everybody well, back down. Yeah, actually, you know, I had heard that because the, here's the here's the clip right after that. You know what? That makes me mad. <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna do this. You could trouble me for a warm glass of shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> a dueling box is. I, know, I, right? I, I love it. I don't even need a box. No, you don't need to produce either. We're good. <laughs> Not with super duper <laughs> mass producer Kenny Pick and um, and uh, skeptical Scott by my side. That was. I have to say that Cantor getting mic checked was, uh, was that was awesome. That was great. Did so, he walk off the stage like Bachman did? No, he's he's standing there with that uh, shit eating grin on his face, smiling, taking got, it. You know, he got paid. He's gonna do his thing. And then, um, of course, take all the time you want. I'm as, getting paid by the hour. As as far as I know, they eventually escorted all of the protesters, and he gave his little talk. But um, I thought that was brilliant. And tip of the hat and um, applause. Who gave you a sense of Don't us think you miss what you're thinking of. <laughs> To um uh to the folks that occupy Houston, who did that at Rice University, tip of the hat. And coming up next, we are at the bottom of the hour. Uh, coming up next, we're going to get on uh, my friend Jeff Roundball Hauser on Occupy Denver, which um man, some violent violent uh, crackdowns broke out there. And then uh, we're going to open it up. Anything goes. We're going to let uh, Kenny and and Scott rant freely for the for the last uh, bit of the show because. I've been doing way too much talking, and it's all right, dude. <laughs> it's great show tonight. Uh, thank you, buddy. Thank you, it's brother. It's called Jacob Dean Show. Come on, man. Ah, uh, and uh, well, you know, it's it's. I'm all about the team. I'm all about the family. And again, you know, all about the team. Thank you again to Ray um, and uh, my dad. And we're going to get Jeff on right now to talk about Occupy Denver. So don't go anywhere. More filter-free radio coming up. And I've I still have something up my sleeve. I, I'm going to show you that uh, my sleeve's all rolled up and I'm going to do a little bit of magic here before the show's over. So don't go anywhere. Filter Free Radio will be right back. FilterFreeRadio.com Know it. Live it. Disappointed yet again by Sunday morning political talk shows brought to you by the mainstream media? Don't let them ruin your Mondays. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. There's a fresh way, a filter-free way, to jumpstart your news week. On Monday nights, come experience Jacob Dean, host of Filter Free Radio. He is the most interesting man in the world. Finally, there's a radio talker who will arm you with the real facts, all the facts, and guide you through the labyrinth of fake news and false punditry. Each week, Jacob Dean throws out all those worn-out memes, crystallizes important issues, champions progressive causes, and features constructive solutions. That's Filter Free Radio, every Monday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern on the Ustream home of Nicole Sandler, RadioOrNot.com, and FilterFreeRadio.com, the official website of Filter Free Radio. You're listening to WIN, the workers' independent news service. I'm Jesse Russell. A new commercial launched on Veterans Day calls on the House of Representatives to vote no on a resolution that could see as many as 120,000 postal workers laid off. 
The Postal Workers and Mail Handlers Union launched the ad to bring attention to the fact that the U.S. Postal Service employs more veterans than any other civilian employer. According to the organization, as many as 26,000 veterans could be put out of work if the legislation passes in the House. In addition to the layoffs, that plan also calls for an end to Saturday deliveries and the shuttering of thousands of post offices around the country. A second plan introduced in the Senate doesn't end Saturday deliveries and seeks to buffer the layoffs with buyouts. Under the Senate plan, the Office of Personnel Management would be authorized to repay the Postal Service for $7 billion in overpayments made to the employee retirement system. $2 billion of that would be used to encourage employees to take early retirement, and if 100,000 employees do so, the Postmaster General believes it could save the service as much as $8 billion per year. A union-affiliated finance and investment company is joining the American Federation of Teachers to invest in Oregon public schools. Doug Cunningham has more on the story. Ulico, the union labor life insurance company, says it will collaborate with government, unions, and businesses to invest up to $15 million in Oregon schools that include low-cost energy retrofits. Ulico CEO Edward M. Smith says Ulico is committed to providing specialty insurance and investment products to meet the needs of working men and women, as it has since its founding in 1927. AFL-CIO Building and Construction Trades President Mark Ayers says these kinds of investments are invaluable to members of the building trades who are grateful for the chance to strengthen communities where they live and work. American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten, meanwhile, says that she's gratified by this investment because it will help ensure children have access to facilities which help them reach their full potential. This $15 million Oregon Public Schools investment is part of a broad commitment to action by a number of unions and investors through a Clinton Global Initiative earlier this year. Pacifica Radio says it's riveting. This is what democracy looks like. Wisconsin's Worker Uprising is a one-hour documentary from Madison-based Workers Independent News. Get your copy today at laborradio.org. You've been listening to WIN, the Workers Independent News. For more information, visit laborradio.org. I'm Jacob Dean, host of Filter Free Radio, and you're listening to Turn Up the Night with Kenny Pick. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. See the strangest show in the galaxy. All right, here we go. Hold your ears, folks. It's showtime. It's okay to be nervous. I still either throw up or get the runs before every show. Last night it was both. It may seem weird to you, but there is a reason behind everything that we do here. We provide people with a very important and sacred service. You understand me? I get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, if you get it, then you turn it up. I don't really want to join a little freak show. Just looking for some information, so if you could point me in the right direction, it would be great. Live every Tuesday and Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern on the Ustream home of Nicole Sandler, RadioOrNot.com. And... KennyPick.com. So can I get you gentlemen something more to drink? Or maybe something to nibble on. Some pizza shooters, shrimp poppers, or extreme fajitas. Just coffee. Okay. Sounds like a case of the Mondays. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Let me ask you something. When you come in... On Monday and you're not feeling real well, does anyone ever say to you, sounds like someone has a case of the Mondays? No. No, man. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. And welcome back to Filter Free Radio. It is Monday. We are live broadcasting from Washington, D.C. Even though we have uh, live correspondence via Portland, Oregon, and uh, Dartmouth, Massachusetts, and... Cleveland, Ohio, and joining us on the phone now is um, our good friend. He was on the program a couple of shows ago talking NBA. He's actually a sports insider, but I wanted to get him on because um, he's uh, in Denver. I'm, of course, uh, speaking of Jeff. Uh, Jeff Roundball Hauser, welcome to the program, buddy. 
Hey, Jacob, thanks for having me. Oh, well, thank you, man. Thanks for coming on. Uh, I want to introduce you real quick to my uh, co-host. I believe you spoke with before, Skeptical Scott. And oh, Skeptical Scott. What's going on, man? Welcome, welcome. And thanks. Also joining us, host of Turn Up the Night with Kenny Pick, and officially tonight's Filter Free Radio Super Duper Mass Producer, Mr. Kenny Pick. <laughs> Say, it's, I, an, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, don't to ask me anything about sports because I don't know. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to. I will keep and I live in Cleveland too, tonight. so it really, even if I did know, it would just be depressing anyway. <laughs> the only recollection you guys have of football is Bernie Kosar. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> and, and again, you know, I I don't even know what the hell that is. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing, though. I mean, don't you agree? It's a good thing that I'm not into sports and I live in Cleveland. Yeah, I, I well. What choice are, do you have? I, I guess more recently, what you guys have is LeBron leaving. So yeah, then uh, you know, yeah, Danielle got him down in Florida. Than so. it did in his foresight. So. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, I, yeah, all I know are the names and when the the city gets more money from from those names. That's Yay, it. money! <laughs> that's something we all like. Um, and and speaking of money, the uh, the big elephant of the room as of lately is all the folks without money, or AKA the ninety nine percent fighting or trying to um, you know maintain this movement of Occupy Wall Street against the one percent or the ones who have all the money. I like to consider. And um, if, if you're just joining us, we've been talking about all program long, kind of the big news of the weekend is the kind of the, the police uh, arrests and crackdowns of different Occupy movements all over the country. We've uh, focused on Portland for a majority of the show, but I want to, Jeff, I want to bring you on because you're in Denver and the police did a, uh, I, would, I would consider a pretty violent crackdown of Occupy Denver over the weekend. <laughs> Dog bark. Oh. <laughs> no, and, and they did. It was it was definitely a very much crackdown on on a lot of things. I I love but, pu- dogs are fine. I love puppies, by the way. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my I'm over at my parents' house right now, and they have a a barking dog. He he just loves to ramble at the door in his mailman. <laughs> but what what had happened was is the police arrested 17 protesters today, and they told them they could sleep on the sidewalk, and a lot of them did. But when they tried to reconvene towards the park, the police were macing them kind of at their will. And it, it, it just goes to show you that what, what is happening more, as more people get involved with the Occupy protests, you see this mass hysteria of cops. Uh, I mean, it, just the cop presence within itself. The, the whole, we need to maintain the city and... And they don't care about people. They don't. Uh, Chapel Hill, perfect example. Yep. And well, I just, I just, uh, real quick, I just went to the website, uh, Denver, OccupyDenver.org, OccupyDenver.org, and they have a statement uh, from Occupy Denver that says, Denver cops um, tried to uh, kettle people together and, and riddled them with pepper balls, and uh, another uh, protester was hit by a police motorcycle and had to be hospitalized, mm-hmm. um, and they're saying that uh, police were threatening to, quote, break people's teeth and then quote shoot people god the Um, the denver police within themselves have a bad reputation of violence it it wasn't that long ago that two kids were downtown and they in fact ran into the cops and one of the kids stepped to the side and said well i'm just going to call my dad for advice because he knew he was going to get arrested for public intoxication and his dad happened to be a lawyer so he steps to the side First call on his dad, the cop grabs the kid by the back of the head and slams him on the pavement, broke out some of his teeth. And it's, it, it's been a known factor that the Denver police have been violent, and it, this doesn't surprise me. But what needs to happen in more nationwide is more people need to come out and say, you know what, we're tired of this shit. We're going we're gonna to make a deep stand towards fixing this shit, and we're not going to put Fix up it. with this shit anymore. Fix it. When Absolutely. Have, fix it, fix it, fix it. When you have ninety nine percent of a population, Sorry, when it's the top one percent of the earning class in the United States that makes that gap, I mean, we're all just going to become slave workers. That's what's going to happen. We're going to become to where it's the top one percent control everything, and then the other ninety nine don't have anything. 
We're already there. Yeah, we're already there. We're already there. <laughs> well, it's, it's only getting worse. In cases, we are, we are yeah. already there. But it's going to take a whole lot of people realizing that, that quit playing a corporate game and actually stick to something that will better you. And I know when people get greedy, money is all that empowers people. But in this case, it it's a little bit different. I think that's where people have a hard time understanding. I was talking to a coworker today, and the one big point, like he said, he's like, I make, you know, I don't make that much, but I, I don't understand, once you reach that top bracket, why you can't keep your money. And I tried to explain to him fundamentally how it should work and how it's working now, and he still didn't understand it. He said, well, if I make, you know, over $100,000, or in this case, you know, millions is what he was talking about, why am I not entitled to keep that at the same tax rate as someone who makes, you know, thirty to sixty thousand dollars a year. Yep, yep. And they, they they don't understand it. When you talk to Republicans, they don't understand the rhetoric. They don't understand. They all they want to think about is the trickle down effect from Reaganomics. It doesn't work. It never has. And they think you throw a bunch of money up to these corporations. That's why they're not for tax breaks. They they don't. Or I should say, they they want to have the tax break still intact because the George Bush era tax rates that were there benefit the rich and the super wealthy, the I, Koch brothers, as well as uh, anyone on the Republican ticket. If I may, for just a second, I want to read a, a brief excerpt from the Washington Examiner. It's a freebie newspaper that leans very far right. That's the right wing freebie. Um, and you, you want to talk about what, what the conservative take on Occupy Wall Street is. This article just came out a couple days ago from uh, the Examiner's online opinion editor, David Fredesso. Um, and uh, two short passages, he says, he opens the article by saying, Dear Occupiers, you've had your fun, you've suffered some pain, some of you have even braved the cold, but you have also lost the rationale for what you're doing. Your protest is adrift. Now, I'll give him... 20% on that. I'll, I'll, I'll partially agree with that, and we, we were talking about that a little bit ago. But he continues, and he says, It's time for you to go home, and, well, do whatever you were doing before this all began. Yeah, there's nothing to say here. Move along. Your protest was not, or excuse me, your protest has not been a failure. It has successfully raised um, awareness uh, society is now aware that some people steal from food carts and vandalize them with their bodily fluids. And then he ends the article by saying, quote, you should leave because you're starting to give a bad name to drug use and public urination. Who is this? <laughs> yeah, who's this guy again? <laughs> and and uh, he says, uh, you should leave now because you're starting to give a bad name to drug use and public urination, which would ultimately undermine your cause. Um, this is David Fredoso, pardon my for pardon me for butchering his name. It's spelled F R E D D O S O, and uh, he is um, he can be reached at uh, the Washington Examiner dot com. Jesus, but you know what though? Everybody knows you never go full retard. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> so, that's kind of what the rights in, in general he. His statement just has to come off as being brash because that's who he writes for, the Washington Examiner. Yeah. Quite frankly, he's put out those type of pieces about, I mean, even the Michael Vick case. He yeah. said that Michael Vick should be uh, killed just like his dogs were. You know, and, you know I, I don't agree with what Michael Vick did, but still, in the same realm of light, when, when do you actually take the real stance on the situation? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, when Michael Vick went to jail, we have no no Wall Street bankers have gone to jail, not one. You know, so no, it's like we don't no, have the rule. Not one. And I've I've actually thought about switching. I'm a Wells Fargo customer. Oh my God! I, you should I've take your money out now. Pump money into their system, and they've charged me bank fees forever and ever and ever. And yep. I'm I'm almost had it. Yeah, have you looked into credit unions in your uh, area around Bowl? Yeah, yeah, I implore oh, yeah. you to do that. And credit unions are the way to go. Nonprofit banking. Banking should be a an institution that is what uh, what do we call a utility, if it were not not a not a casino. Commons. Yeah, it's part of the commons. Put your money in there. They give you mono credit. They they take care of your money for you. They don't gamble with it. That's part of the Glass Steagall. So. Yeah. You, you know what I'm wondering? The big picture, maybe maybe you can speak to this, Jeff. Is that um, why is it? 
that certain certain regions like in DC here we have at least two or three protests going on nonstop uh, and other regions have been fine and not been cracked down upon yet Oakland and Denver and Portland and things have have had major crackdowns and and, and police brutality and we don't have that here and I'm wondering why that is I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the they the city of Denver is very democratic we have a democratic governor and Governor Hickenlooper, and we have a Democratic mayor within Michael Hancock. But I think that they they want to have that whole force of we're going to try and force people out of here, and we're we're going to make sure that we're still the leading factor in the United States, showing people that we're going to be the first ones to push this Occupy movement to the side. Hmm. Yeah, they're, they're, they're probably trying to lead the, the governor or the mayor. I think it's the chief of police. And I think that they roll on their own circumstances, just like in Oakland. They don't want that to turn into, like, the L.A. riots. I mean, yeah. we all seen what happened with the L.A. riots. The police had no control. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's yeah. what the city of Oakland is thinking right now. And, you know, the yeah. irony is, too, what you just mentioned, L.A. L.A. has an Occupy movement that's four times that of Occupy Wall Street. And they have, they put out... YouTube videos every week. They have a full stage with a microphone. With a, fr they have you know, no problems whatsoever. <laughs> uh, well, actually, there was one problem about Occupy LA. Oh, what was that one? Um, uh, this is a kind of a sneak peek. This is what I was going to roll up my sleeve with, and I'm happy that you mentioned Occupy LA. Um, Tom Hartman is the voiceover for a brand new documentary film that's going to be coming out. It's going to begin to be screening. It's called Heist. You can check it out. Heist the movie is the website, um, and uh, we just actually wrapped up recording the voiceover for that a couple of weeks ago, and they actually were going to screen it because one of the producers is from L.A. They were going to screen the movie at Occupy L.A. for all of the Occupy participants there at Occupy L.A., um, and they actually took it to the General Assembly and voted on it, and the General Assembly voted no. They did, did not want to watch the movie. Wow, and it was simply because it had nothing to do with Tom. It had nothing to do with the heist movie, and it was actually a it's a quite of a brilliant movie, uh, just based on what I've heard from the voiceover recording. It's going to be fantastic, but um, it was just simply the General uh, Assembly of Occupy LA had another event going on at the same time at the same location, and they simply said, "We are a democracy. Uh, this is our vote, and we're voting. And no, we're doing what we want to do." Well, they got bigger priorities, and which is. I think kind of cool. That's fine. Yeah, I, I can I can appreciate that. Well, in the same realm, you know, you think about it. They don't want the word out there. They don't want educated people. When think about it like this, have you guys noticed? And, and maybe it's just here in Denver. Maybe I've been hearing these commercials on the radio about if you if you notice suspicious people, notify the police immediately. Yada yada yada. And then it rolls into another PSA of save up food for two months, have a two-month storage. And if you don't know where the fresh water is in your community or fresh lake where you can go find fresh water, have a plan of emergency to find so. Oh, my God. Sure. What, do you want a divining rod for that? <laughs> As I was going to say, that's, that sounds like some Glenn Beck territory, Ken. Might yeah, have to... <laughs> it does. Uh, so you're, wait, no, that's, did that's I miss something? That's what's running on our airwaves here in town. Huh. That, wow. that's, I... I keep hearing these commercials of... You oh, you know what? I, I do know what you're talking about, Jeff. I've heard one myself, um, like uh, emergency preparedness PSAs, yep. um, something emergency like that. Emergency preparedness. Have yeah. two months of storage with food and nowhere to find fresh water. That's what they kept saying during Y2K. <laughs> <laughs> we we well, got yeah, past that. Course. But, hey, you know, uh, they, they know something's happening, and they, they know... Mm. Well, you know, they want to have people running and scared. You know, there's a statistic out, and I've heard many many people talk about this, many activists. Um, it says that by 2025, two-thirds of the world's population will not have access to clean drinking water. That, that's that's how many years from now, Jacob? Uh, what, 14 years from now? And they want Two-thirds. And they want to build the Keystone XL pipeline through the biggest uh, aquifer. The Clala, Walker, yeah. And they have uh, committed, documented evidence that everything that trans oh, not everything uh, many projects the the current the current keystone pipeline that exists leaks it's not 
I mean, it's like, yep, it leaks. Sorry, you mm. know, forty percent. We, we just had a guy on, um, uh, Josh Fox, uh, who did the movie The Gasland movie. Um, we had him on Hartman program today, and he was talking about forty percent of their projects of oil oil, oil company projects. Forty percent. Um, have some sort of leak or damage or problem that's causing pollution and toxification of the environment, and yet they're running constant ads. You see these ads, oh, come on down to the Gulf, everything's just fine. Um, oh, by the way, sponsored by BP, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, whatever you do, don't eat seafood from the Gulf of Mexico. The shrimp are pre-marinated. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys watch 60 Minutes last night? No, no, I heard bad things about it. Tell me. Ugh. All, all that I'm saying is I, I can't explain it in detail. You just have to sit down and watch it. Okay. It's something. It's, it's something that. What, what really was the topic, or what was it on? Just Congress. Oh, okay. Congress and how they, how they work, operate, and just the it'll make you mad. Sure. I, if, if you want, if you really want to be pissed off. Oh, you're talking about how Congress Congress can legally trade stock uh, with insider trading, and, and there's a, there's a rule that says they're exempt from insider trading. Yep. Yeah. I think it was Jim. Um, God, what's his name? Jim McDermott. Uh, he's a he's a representative or senator out of Washington State that first tried to break the that news probably maybe a year or two, maybe even four yeah. or five ago. Yeah, that was Newt Gingrich who put that. By the way, it's been on the books for like 15 years. Really, oh, you did that? Is number oh. two right now. I didn't think he was. Uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those old blue. It's one of those old laws they put in uh, back during the Clinton administration because uh, the, apparently they were what day trading inside his office <laughs> with insider information. So Jesus Christ! So they passed. They passed a bill that said it was legal. I do. I do really quick want to mention that we're about at the ten minute warning uh, for the, for the show, and so at this point, I want to just kind of open it up to anything goes roundtable discussion. Um, and and Kenny, I want to throw it to you because we haven't heard too much from you tonight, and you did some hell of a hell of a producer work well, job. Uh, and yeah, I didn't do that much. I just want to actually, <laughs> since we had Jeff on the line, I kind of wanted to get his take on the uh, situation in Penn State. Oh yeah, man! What do you think? Huh? Here's something I, I thought was interesting. I heard today. Uh, I forget what show. It might have been the Tom Hartman show, but I heard somebody call in and say, "Yeah, there's been all these, uh, you know, cops cracking down at all the, you know, Occupy Wall Street uh, uh, protests." But hey, where were the cops in PA when uh, all the students went out and were flipping over a news truck? And uh, you know, there was nobody there. Where were they? Where were no, the cops they, for that they when they were protesting they to support somebody who would cover low. up for child rape? Go ahead, Jeff. I, you know, I'm so mixed on the, the whole Penn State situation because it's, it's sad. It's sad that we still have people in this country who think it's okay to take advantage of kids. And just did you, did you see the interviews that came out today of the guy uh, interviewed probably five, six years ago? And they were playing him on MSNBC on Martin Bashir, a couple of short clips. He was basically Sandusky, guy. Sandusky. And they've got clips of him saying, oh, I love children. I get along with children very well. Um, I just I do really well with them. And he's smiling. And it's like now you watch it. And it's like, oh, my God. He looks like a predator. In, of in course. It's it's disgusting. If the signs were all there. We just sort of never looked at. It. Well, well, but, but, Jeff, you said you're kind of torn on it. What? Sandusky within himself. He knows what he did was wrong. And who knows? Probably someone did it to him as a child. And it's, it's a sad yeah. cycle that, unfortunately, would, the, the, there's a lot of storylines behind this Penn State situation. He was out on, uh, I, I think it was $100,000 bail. I'm sorry. You, you, there's a lot of culpability on a lot of different levels in this situation. And... Um, you know, a lot of people knew a lot about what was going on. That means like local police, uh, you know, people in the hierarchy of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the college football, you know, system, obviously the, the, you know, the, the guy who found him, uh, McQuarrie, uh, I can't remember his first name. Yeah. Mike McQuarrie. And then, Mike McQuarrie. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, he, he reported it to, uh, what, what's the guy's name? Uh, Papa, what, what's, uh. Well, he he reported it to Paterno. Paterno then Turn. in turn went to school officials and said, this is going on, but this is what I was told. School officials just brushed it to the side and said, well, yeah, whatever. What makes me so pissed off with Penn State, and 
why they should have came out earlier is they came out the week after Joe Paterno passes Eddie Robinson for a hundred and or for four hundred and seven wins, excuse me, in college football, making him the top coach in college football for wins. I remember that. Uh, I didn't know that. Off. I wow, that. that's terrible. Because what, 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 what's like terrible? What what is this now? About it. And they, they did a hell of a job trying to cover it up. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie, Joe, Eddie Joe, Robinson, the, the, the head coach of Grambling University, and Doug Williams, former head coach, is all-time winning as coach in college football history, and he's black. Joe, uh, J- Joe surpassed that, and I remember watching that. Uh, that, was a big, that was a big story not even a year ago. Uh, so this, they're, trying to, they're trying to give credit to Paterno, where it actually belonged to somebody else? Well, no, they, they waited until he passed the record before they, before they rolled him under that's, the bus. What, what Jeff is saying right now is Joe Paterno at, uh, last year surpassed and became the, most, the winningest coach in, in, in college football history, and they've waited to bring out this whole scandal until after he um, surpassed that milestone. Without to co- to cause confrontation oh, before okay. that. Yeah, I have heard a little bit about this. I again, it kind of washes over me not knowing and, much about sports. And, and Ken, I'm right there with you. I'm a Ducks fan, and the Ducks are kicking ass. So that's all that I follow on <laughs> on co- college football. So, but yeah. So anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of get your take on it. But I mean, the, but do you think that the, the uh, Paterno should have gotten uh, uh, canned a lot sooner, Jeff? I think if the university knew about it and they knew what was going on, and it. It wasn't like he was taking him off campus. That's the sickening part. He was bringing him into the showers at Penn State and having sex with these boys. Mm-hmm. That is the sickening part of all of this. Yep. Yeah. Because now the university can be be sued, and I, I hope they do. Well, they, I... what, what needs to happen is this. The, the football program at Penn State needs to be put on the death penalty, if not for one year, but for two. And I think they really need to take a strong look at that whole hierarchy of football coaches, administration, and they need to have a complete crackdown and say, yeah. you know what, this is not right. We're, we're not going to live by these standards, and we're not going to – we're going to put ourselves out there to say no more. I think the Nebraska coach summed it up best when he said that he thought the game should have been canceled Saturday. Um, but um, oh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and leave it at that. We've only got a couple minutes to wrap up, and again, I want to thank Jeff, Mr. Jeff Roundball-Hauser, our official sports insider and uh, official Denver uh, 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 reporter affiliate for uh, Filter Free Radio for coming on the program. Jeff, it's always a pleasure speaking with you, buddy, and um, you know we'll be hearing from you soon. Well, Jacob, thank you. <laughs> Scott, thank you. Kenny, Nice to meet you. and Yeah, and nice to meet you. you. Well. If I need a sports ex- expert on Turn Up the Night, you're my go-to guy. Hey, uh-huh. you know, anything sports-related, I'm there. As, yeah, as long as it's not anything like skiing <laughs> or, you know, maybe <laughs> curling. Yeah, I we won't get into the weeds on sports. Is, but, get it. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff do, you, do you ever read uh, HoopsHype.com? Oh, I actually have a friend who's a writer for HoopsHype. Nice. His name and, is Travis, and he's <laughs> and the ne- and the networking and begins. Yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, if you're a basketball junkie, you read hoops hype. Well, the NBA is done. They yep. they're never going to come to an agreement, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. I yep. mean, it's going to be it's going to be a long time coming for David Stern. Good song, by the way. Ass. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. <laughs> mm-hmm. Long time coming. Anyway, sorry, Jeff. Um, I do want to wrap up real quick. We've only got a couple minutes left. I want to thank everyone who came on um, and and made the uh, show possible today. A big thank you, tip of the hat, to Ray Medeiros, the Ray Medeiros Show, USA Progressive with Ray Medeiros. Check him out. He's live every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, and also, uh, many thanks to uh, my dad, J.D. Fishing in the chat room. Hey, Dad, for hey. coming on and giving us a uh, uh, update from Occupy Portland. And uh, Jeff, we just heard uh, Jeff Roundball Hauser from Denver giving us the the scoop, as as they say in the sports jazz, about Occupy Denver. Uh, many thanks to our official uh, filter free radio. Um, <laughs> super duper mass producer uh, Kenny Pick and host of, of Turn Up the Night. Ken, love you, bud. Thanks uh, as always for coming on, man. It's much appreciated. Anytime. And uh, Scott, thank you, man, for hanging in there as always. You you are um, you know the the anchor that that keeps me held down <laughs> when I when I get going. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, and finally, I want to wrap up the show with my final trick up my sleeve. I want to mention everyone in Washington D.C. Get yourself over to Colombian dot gwu.edu slash west event Dr. Cornell West is going to be speaking December 1st live in Washington D.C. for free. I'm going to put more information up on that at filterfreeradio.com that's why we've been playing the Cornell West Open all day and I'm going to end the show with this. Also tip of the hat and thanks to my new hero Makana, the Hawaiian guitarist who played his song uh, for President Barack Obama uh, my name is Jacob Dean. Thank you so much for fil- uh, hanging out with us on FilterFreeRadio.com. Thanks to Nicole Sandler of RadioOrNot.com and all the people who make this program possible. The Roy Burt at CrowdRecords.com. Also, DanoSongs.com for music production. I am Jacob Dean signing out saying the conversation begins here, but it's up to you to continue it out there. We'll see you next week on Filter Free Radio. This is it. You're listening to Jacob Dean. Most of our leaders have either sold out, caved in, gave up. They don't want to tell people the truth. If you're looking for filters, you came to the wrong place. They're too concerned about their careers. They're too concerned about success. They're too concerned about just winning the next election for their status. We bring you the real stuff. This is Filter Free Radio with Jacob Dean. But who wants to tell the truth? The condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. If you don't talk about poverty, you're not telling the truth. You're not talking about working people being pushed against the wall with corporate profits high. You're not telling the truth. You're listening to Jacob. If you're not talking about the criminal activity on Wall Street and not one person going to jail yet, you're not telling the truth. Filter Free Radio with Jacob Dean on the Ustream home of Nicole Sandler, Radio or Not, and FilterFreeRadio.com. And we live now in revolutionary times, but the counter-revolution is winning. Live every Monday 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have a new wave of truth telling. We're going to have a new wave of witness bearing. And we're going to teach the younger generation that these brothers didn't struggle in vain just like John Brown and Nat Turner and Marcus Garvey and Martin King and Miles Horton and the others did. And we shall see what happens. We might get crushed too. But you know what? Then you just go down swinging like Ella Fitzgerald Muhammad Ali. Yeah.